Howdy everyone and welcome back to The More You Grow. In the last episode you saw some of the awesome seeds that I've got in for this year. I'm a little bit late on a lot of those. That's what I do. I plant things late because I can never get my ducks in a row in the right amount of time. But we're going to give them a shot, see how they do, just because better late than never, right? So I wanted to take a few minutes to bring you out here to the greenhouse. We're going to plant some of those seeds, but first let me show you around because I've added some awesome things out here to the greenhouse since the last time you saw it. So let's go check it out. The first things you probably notice out here in the greenhouse that are new are the shelves behind me and the table. The shelf behind me is actually an old seed tray that they used to use when I worked at Tractor Supply to put seedlings on and seeds, things like that. And one of the wheels broke off of it and they were just going to throw it away. I'm all about upcycling things. I'm like, that's a perfectly good shelf. Can I take that home with me? And they're like, yeah, it's going to the dumpster. Go ahead. And so all I did was I turned it upside down. So all the wheels are on top and it's not wobbly anymore. It works just fine as a shelf. I'm not moving it anywhere. So this was in my garage. I moved it out here. So we're going to be putting seedling trays on this right here. And then over here, you'll see that I have a just regular fold out white table. This is going to be my potting bench because it's high enough that I can roll my legs up underneath it and I can plant all my seedling trays out on the table and transfer them over to the rack. So it's going to be a pretty good system I think. Another thing that I have, you can kind of see at the back here, is this thermometer. So this is normally inside with me because over here you can see right there Right there, there's a little sensor that stays out here, and then I can check the temperature inside without having to come out here to check it. So right now it's about 69 degrees. I have a little heater down here that I want to show you because it is a fancy little dude. So check out this little heater, guys. I love this heater. It is a gazelle, I think is how you say it. I will leave a link for this down in the description. I got it on Amazon. I really like this little heater because it's perfect size for my greenhouse and it's got a digital thermostat on it. That is a big deal because this will cut off once it gets above 70 in here. I've got it set to 70 right now and it will make it to where it doesn't get too hot in here. It doesn't keep running. And one thing I really like about this one, check this out. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It oscillates. So that way it's distributing the heat more evenly here in the greenhouse. So it has a 50 degree oscillation, I think. So it'll go back and forth about 50 degrees. And it also has a setting on here where I can increase the heat or decrease the heat to high heat or low heat. And then it has a timer if I really wanted to. It has a timer that'll go off where it'll, it will start at a certain time, but I just want this thing to continue to stay about 70 degrees in here or a little higher, but this will cut off if it gets above 70. I could set this lower to where I don't want it to get below 50 in here. I could set that down to 50 degrees and it will cut on anything below 50. So I think this is a really awesome little heater. I'll leave a link for that down in the description. So let's go on to show what else we've got new in the greenhouse. Sorry if I sound a little bit nasally guys, I have a bit of a cold and I'm a little bit stopped up so if I sound like I'm holding my nose, that's why. Anyways, I want to show you this. I put in some rubber mats down here into the floor of the greenhouse. I know I put in the wheat cloth, I thought that would be enough floor and I'd be able to get around just fine, but it buckled up too much when I tried to roll over. It was just a mess. So we had these extra mats that we used to have in our cattle trailer that I moved in here to the greenhouse. They worked out perfect. If you cut them in half, they line up just right. And that makes, that makes it where I can roll around in here just fine. It's still got enough space between the mats to where water could run through, go through the weed mat. I think it's gonna work great. So now, time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's plant our very first seeds in our new greenhouse. So now that we have this awesome setup in here and we're ready to plant, the question is, what are we going to plant first? Before we talk about what we're going to plant though, I want to show you this. I want to show you the trays that I use to start my seedlings. These are called root maker trays and they look like your average plastic trays to start seedlings in. But there's something special about them. What's special about them is these are air pruning trays. What they do is they prune the roots back 
What that does is it causes the roots to branch out more, create more fibrous roots, and a stronger root system. So if you look down here, you'll see all the surface area and these holes. So the more surface area you have, the more roots you're going to get. And having these holes in the bottom and on the sides allow the roots to emerge out the bottom. They will prune themselves off because of air contact. And that causes them to branch laterally or cause or create more fibrous roots. So you get a stronger, healthier root system for the size of the plant. Now I will have to transplant out of these into three inch pots eventually, but in the beginning, I really like these because if I'm planting a bunch of seeds, I'm not using up a whole bunch of potting soil just to find out that only half of my seeds are gonna germinate. If I plant them in this, I let my seeds germinate, I can see exactly how many plants I'm gonna have without using up a whole bunch of potting soil or wasting a whole bunch of potting soil. And I like it because they fit perfectly. They fit perfectly into these little plastic trays. Look at that. Like a glove. So we're going to take some of these. We're going to plant out some seeds. So what I have here as far as seeds, start with the vegetables. We all like vegetables, right? So let's start with some vegetables. So I have first lemon spice jalapenos. I love the color of these. They're supposed to be pretty hot, which makes me a little nervous, but I think they're going to be good. I always look for color, unusual color or brighter colors, because the more color a vegetable has or a fruit has, the healthier it is for you. And the more diversity in color that you have, the better. So I got yellow jalapenos here. They're supposed to be pretty darn spicy, but I want to try to make some of the hot sauce that I was talking about in a previous video. I want to try to make some out of this as well as the lemon drop peppers. So I'm going to take these, we're going to plant these in just a little bit. And you're going to laugh at this, but I have bell peppers here. The funny thing about bell peppers and me is I hate bell peppers. So why am I planting them? Why am I planting a pepper that I hate? Well, honestly, it's because it's not about me. It's not all about me. People like bell peppers. A lot of people out there like bell peppers. A lot of my family members do. So I have some good old nasty bell peppers here. To me, they're just like a pepper that tastes like a dirty sock. But not knocking you if you like them. Everybody has their differences. These are super healthy for you. So high in vitamin C. I need me some of this right now to help with this cold. These have much more vitamin C than citrus do. So if you're looking for a good vitamin C boost, eat yourself some bell peppers. And I have some tomatoes that I want to try to plant. These are from Tomato Fest. I haven't tried this company yet. I just got these not long ago. And a friend recommended this company to me. So I'm going to give this a shot. I really like the name of these. Look at this. Clint Eastwood's Rowdy Red. These are supposed to be some bold tomatoes, just like Clint Eastwood here. These are bold, going to punch you in the face. Let's hope not. But they have a bold flavor. I'm looking for tomatoes with flavor. I'm tired of having tomatoes that are just watery and bland and ugh, who wants that? So these are supposed to have some pretty bold flavors, so I'm excited to give these a try. And I know I'm pretty late on planting out a lot of these, these peppers and tomatoes. I really should have had these planted about beginning of February, end of January. I did get some planted out in the school greenhouse. Well, the students did. I didn't do it. The students planted out some tomatoes and peppers there. So thank goodness I've got some that I can kind of count on, but I want to give these a shot as well. And I'm just dying to plant something here. We also have some flowers here today we're going to try to plant. So we have some Agastache, which I think is really just another name for hyssop, which is a nice edible herb and has a great flavor. And the main reason I got this though is for the flowers. I love good edible flowers. I have a really cool idea I want to do with edible flowers this year. So we're going to give them a shot. I also really want to get these is because hummingbirds and butterflies absolutely love this plant. They will just flock to it, especially since it's a nice orange color. So these are really beautiful plants. If you haven't seen these before, do a little Google search for Mr. Google Pants as Justin Rhodes says. Google Pants, these guys, go check them out. Look them up on Google Images. They're absolutely beautiful. And then... One of my favorites, I'm going to get these planted out because I love seeing them and I want to try doing some cut flowers. I want to see if I could grow, maybe sell some cut flowers, see if some of the floral shops are interested 
or even if it's just that I can enjoy them myself or give them to my mom. So I have some zinnias here, a mix zinnias. I have some other flowers I'm going to plant out later, but I really want to just start with this and see where we're going to go with this. I have a lot of space that as of right now, but I have a feeling that's not going to last. I want to make sure that I don't go too crazy and plant out too much. So we'll see. We'll just start with this and see where we go. So let's get these planted up. So what we need to do now is we need to fill this up with soil. So got to get some soil or we can't grow anything. I'm using just a nice commercial potting mix. Nothing too fancy. And I like this kind because it doesn't have a ton of pine bark. Which in some cases pine bark is great. But in other cases it's just not. Because in these little seed trays, these little cells, big old chunks of pine bark are going to really mess this up. It's really not going to be all that great. This does have some pine bark in it. I used to like the other brand. forgot what it was called, but it had no pine bark in it. But I'm just going to go along here and kind of put this in one scoop at a time. We get any big chunks of pine bark. This is why I don't like this stuff, guys. This is why I don't like potting soil with pine bark for these seed trays because this right here, this is like half the size of the tray or half the size of the cell, I mean. So we don't really want a too much of that in there, but a little bit's okay. I'm gonna try to find another potting mix next time I go that doesn't have pine bark because this stuff is okay. It's better than some of the others that I've used, but it's really obnoxious. So I'm gonna fill this tray up and we'll plant us some seeds. I'll talk about how I get them planted. All right guys, got the tray filled with potting soil. Now we need to make our labels because I've made this mistake before. You don't make your labels and you don't remember what you planted where. So I always do that first now. So let's start off with our peppers. Let's do some peppers. So we're gonna ride out some of these bell peppers. I just use popsicle sticks. They're easy, they're inexpensive. And I like them better than plastic because the plastic always tends to either fade or it will wash off if you get it too wet or use the wrong kind of marker. And it's just less plastic going out into the environment. So I always try to use wooden popsicle sticks. And another thing I always do is always put the date on the other side so that way you can remember when you started these. So today's date is at Siri, March 12th. So, March 12th. We're going to plant these about a quarter of an inch deep. They're not huge seeds, so you don't want to bury them too deep. I'm going to do a whole video on planting seeds one of these days. It's really important to know your seed depth. I think a lot of people's issues when they plant seeds is they'll either plant them too shallow or too deep. you got to know what seed you're planting. And the big reason why you don't want to plant them too deep is seeds only have so much stored energy. You plant them too deep they're going to run out of energy before they reach the surface and they're just going to die and if you plant them too shallow they could dry out some seeds need to be planted on the surface where they only where they do get some light they have to have light to germinate and i'll talk about some of those here in another video but for this case we're going to plant these bell peppers about a quarter of an inch so we're just going to come along here and use my little marker here make a quarter of an inch little hole and plant these down in there. So next up we're going to plant some of these yellow jalapenos. We're going to see how they do. We're going to get these planted. We're going to plant these about the same, about a quarter of an inch. Not really anything much different than the bell peppers. I don't know if we're gonna plant as many of these because if you, anybody's ever grown jalapenos before, know that a few plants go a long way. You don't need 20 of them. For sure don't need 20 of them. So here's the seeds on the jalapenos. The bell peppers look the same way. All pepper seeds kind of look the same. But you can see they're not huge seeds. So there are a lot smaller seeds out there but these are relatively small still. So now we're gonna plant out some of our tomato seeds. And honestly, if I would have done it over, I would have just put the peppers in the next row up here. I forgot I had my tomatoes. 
and plant the end in tomatoes, but it's gonna be okay. We'll plant the middle one, two, three, four, five, six rows if we have enough with tomatoes. Next up is our flowers. I'm actually just gonna plant a whole flat of zinnias. I'm gonna use every bit of them, so might as well just plant a whole flat. So I'm just gonna go along here, plant these. Let me show you what the seeds look like. They're much larger than the other seeds have been. I have another package of them too if I run out here. But there's quite a few seeds still in there, but they're a lot larger seeds, so we're gonna plant them a little bit deeper than we did our tomatoes and peppers. So let's get to it. So while I plant these zinnias, let me talk to you a little bit about why I'm planting flowers. So one of the big reasons why I want to plant flowers is for the diversity, the biodiversity out on my farm. One thing about growing flowers is it increases the productivity of your vegetables too. Because if you got flowers out there, you're going to attract more pollinators. And so if you attract more pollinators, of course you're going to get more pollination. So one, it brings in more pollinators. Another reason is it can become an alternate revenue source. So if I plant flowers out there and I grow the right kinds of flowers, then I might be able to sell some cut flowers. Zinnias are a very popular cut flower. I love zinnias. They're one of my favorites because they're easy to grow, especially in the hot weather. They like, well, not super hot, but warm weather, they do well. They are quick to grow. The seeds are very inexpensive and they're beautiful. Well, who doesn't like a good zinnia? The last set of my flowers that I'm going to plant are going to be my edible flowers for one of my projects. I've got two different ones I'm going to do. I'm going to try to do a half of a flat for each of them and it's going to be our hyssop or agastache, however you want to pronounce that, and borage. So borage, borage, however you want to say it. This is a wonderful one. The leaves have a good cucumber flavor, the flowers as well. The flowers are absolutely beautiful. And this is, I guarantee out of all the herbs, a bee's favorite. Well, if you want to consider buckwheat an herb, maybe, but I don't really consider that an herb. I consider that a grain or a flower. But this herb right here has got to be one of the bees' top fives, or top threes. They love it. They will flock on this. So I'm going to try to do a half a flat of each. Look at the seeds on these guys. Look at the seeds on this. I gotta be very, very careful. Woo! Very careful. So, tiny, tiny, tiny seeds. Oh my goodness. Careful, careful, careful. If I sneeze right now, these things are gone. Look at that. That's the whole package right there. Tiny seeds. So we gotta be very, very, very careful with these. So in this case, I'm honestly going to just kind of make an indention on the soil. I'm not even really going to bury these too much. Alrighty guys, I got all the Navajo Sunset Augustashi planted. It was a challenge. Those seeds are tiny. I do want to mention that hyssop seeds, Augustashi, whichever one you want to call it, they do require light to germinate. So you do not want to bury those seeds. You just want to lightly plant them on top, kind of press them in where they get good soil contact, but they need light to germinate. You just gotta be sure not to bury them. So next up we have our borage. Much bigger, this is gonna be much easier. So check it out. We have our forage seeds. These seeds we're gonna dig little holes and plant them like we did the others. So I'll get to that and I'll show you what it looks like when we get done. All right we got them all planted. Put this last tray onto the rack and we're gonna water them in. We're gonna water all of them the same. I'll use a watering can but the hyssop we need to water with a mister because if we water it with a watering can it is going to wash all the seeds out. So we gotta water them a little differently. But let me get that and I'll get right back with y'all. Well guys, I ran out of daylight once I got everything watered and put in the greenhouse, but we've got it all planted and ready to go. I'll be planting some more things in the greenhouse getting ready. It's really about planting time. So I may be doing some things outside around 
in the raised beds that are left and out at the farm. So until then, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you have any more things you'd like me to plant in the greenhouse, leave them down in the comments. I'll try to get those if I can and if I still have time. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Go check us out on Facebook and Instagram and hit that bell icon for notifications. And until next time, I hope you'll join me right here on The More You Grow. Thank you.